Today in the EU, is fear of June EU elections the glue holding the German coalition together? Germany's coalition government has many battles to tackle internally and externally and seems more divided than ever. The main bone of contention is the country's constitutional debt break that expresses the widening divide between the country's three ruling parties. Externally, the coalition is losing ground in the race for the upcoming June elections. One of the ruling parties, the Liberal FDP, fears that it may not meet the required 5% threshold. Hello and welcome. I am Evitori and this is Today in the EU. To break down what's happening with the governing coalition in Germany, I spoke with Jonathan Packhoff, Euractiv's Berlin-based economy reporter. Jonathan, tell us what's happening with Germany's internal tension and what are the reasons for it? Germany has a three-party government coalition, which is also fairly new. Previously, it was usually two parties that were governing together. And after the last election, it uh, it only uh, was possible to have a, a government of three parties. And it was really no love marriage from the beginning. Of course, when they were negotiating, everyone hoped for a new dynamic, a new style of governing as well. This is also what they promised, to really have conflicts uh, clarified internally first and then uh, go out to the public uh, and not only always have the least common or the smallest common denominator, uh, but really try to, to st- uh, start uh, huge reforms. How did that go for them? It didn't go very well because um, then, of course, the the war struck. This led to a lot of repercussions um, also on the German economy. First and foremost, it it led to a huge energy crisis. Um, And of course, uh, Russia phased out the the gas. And then, of course, there were also sanctions imposed, uh, for instance, on oil and other things. So Germany is still performing much worse than other countries. Um, Yesterday, actually, there were new numbers published by the IMF. Only 0.2% of GDP growth expected Mm -hmm. this year, which is the worst among um, all big economies. And last year, there was already a recession. There was a retraction of 0.3%. So we really have an Mm -hmm. economic slump that that is not, not going away immediately. What's the government's plan to overcome this crisis? So now the question is, how should the government respond to this and how can it get the economy back on track? And the, the, the answers the government parties are giving are completely different. They are really almost opposite, so to speak. So the economy minister, Robert Habeck uh, from the Green Party, um, he has this vision of uh, transforming the, the economy, uh, which is quite industry heavy in Germany. Germany has a larger share of industry than other, than other countries and to transform this into climate neutrality. And Habeck thinks that for this, a lot of subsidies are needed and he's really spending a lot. For instance, the tens of billions are going to the steel industry and other heavy industries to help them build new production sites um, that that can produce steel um, and other things that have uh, emitted a lot of CO2 in the past, but continue producing it in a climate neutral way. And this is completely opposite, I would say, from what Christian Lindner, the finance minister, ideologically stands for. He's from the liberal uh, pro-market party, the FDP. So what is he supporting? He's really advocating for really this free market approach. And he's criticizing this idea of subsidizing certain industries because he thinks it should be decided by the market um, and by consumers and investors and so on, which technology and which industry has a future in Germany. This division on how to approach the crisis is also indicating the ideological differences. Can the coalition move past those? And if so, how? It has become even more difficult, actually. Last year, there was a ruling by the Constitutional Court that also um, limited the, the options for the government for spending. What exactly happened with that? Um, in the COVID crisis, the government was able to to use more debt than it was no, would normally be allowed under the, the very strict debt break rule of the German constitution, which limits um, the, the government deficit to uh, 0.35% of GDP normally. But there's an exception for really extraordinary crisis situations like the COVID one, obviously. Um, was used, but then there were actually 60 billion unused debt that was allowed um, during the COVID crisis, but um, but it wasn't needed for COVID-related expenses. So the government hoped to spend that over the next years for mostly these green investments that Robert mm-hmm. Habeck wanted to support. But then the, the court, the constitutional court said, actually, the additional spending that is allowed 
this is only allowed for crisis related expenses and only for the same year. So essentially, the government would need to declare a crisis or an emergency situation every year to keep spending more than is usually allowed in this very strict debt limit. And this is something that uh, that the FDP, that Christian Lindner does not want, because he argues we don't have a crisis situation at the moment. And also the climate, you know, climate emergency, climate crisis, many people call it like this, but it's actually the new normal. So we have to make a lot of green investments anyway over the next years. So we cannot use a crisis exemption for this every year. And you also wrote that senior representatives like Robert Habeck and Lars King Bale are advocating for changes to Germany's fiscal policies, particularly concerning the strict debt break in the constitution. So what impact could these changes have on the country's economic outlook? Yes. So since the debt break was made so much stricter, this debate has really sparked um, how to reform it or should it be reformed? And uh, yeah, as you said, uh, both the SPD um, and and their co-leader, Lars Klingbeil, and also the economy minister from the Greens, Robert Habeck, they are in favor of reform to the debt break. Um, They actually have been in favor of reform before, but now because it's now much stricter in the application of the debt break with this yearly approach, um, this has gained a new momentum actually. Allerdings hat natürlich das Urteil des Bundesverfassungsgerichts unmittelbare Konsequenzen für den The Constitutional Court ruling has of course immediate consequences on the Climate and Transformation Fund, where the 60 billion euros that were planned are no longer available. That is why the budget plan will have to be discussed again. Mentioned Chancellor Olaf Scholz speaking at the Bundestag after November's Constitutional Court ruling. They say it's kind of an unnecessary limit, especially in in the current times where a lot of investments are needed to transform Mm -hmm. towards climate neutrality. And they have there are several ideas floating now how to reform the debt break. The fundamental problem is that it is in the Constitution. So in order to change it fundamentally, then you would need to change the Constitution, which Mm -hmm. is only possible with a two thirds majority in the German parliament. And what would that mean, essentially? For this, the government would not have have the majority, so they would need to work together with the conservative opposition party, City with CSU. And although there are some voices within City with CSU who also are open for this idea, the party line is against it. Mm-hmm. And the party leader, Friedrich Merz, is also very strictly opposed to that. And because there is no majority for, for changing the constitution, there are other ideas floating on a more technical level on kind of how to apply the rules which, for instance, makes use of a cyclical adjustment in the debt break. And you could make use of this by redefining what actually a cyclical downturn is. So essentially, it allows more spending in times of underutilization of the economy and allows less spending in times of overutilization of the economy. But then you can kind of redefine what an underutilization is. And this was allow for more spending as well. So these are the ideas that are floated. But then Christian Lindner, the liberal finance minister, is very strongly opposed to reforming the debt break fundamentally. He showed some openness to some technical changes, but then he already warned against politicizing this and using this to open more uh, space for for spending and subsidies. And if you were to compare Germany to other countries, how would that look? So Germany is performing worse in economic terms. And a lot of people are looking to the US, for instance. The US has a much higher growth rate and also more investment into new factories and uh, and, and especially green um, industries. Uh, and a lot of people say that the Inflation Reduction Act of the of the US is in general a good idea. There's also criticism, of course, that it's uh, much protectionist. But, but then a lot of businesses and also um, politicians say that the general approach of it to subsidize industries, specifically in these green areas, is a good approach. Robert Habeck and others say we need to keep up with that and support our own industries to, to also build uh, production sites here. And on the other side, what's the argument? Christian Lindner actually this week at an event on the debt break, he really defended the debt break and he said actually Germany was doing better because of the debt break in terms of inflation. His argument is that because the US government actually spends a lot of money, they are kind of fueling inflation. And it's true that over the last month, the inflation has not gone down in the US Mm -hmm. and is quite stable at around 3.5%. So it is higher than it is in Germany, where it's going down uh, continuously Mm -hmm. and and it's close to the target now of 2%. So essentially, Lindner makes the point that limiting government expenditure, this has also helped uh, reduce inflation. Just to give some background, because this tension has been boiling for a while now. How did we get to this point? The government started with really 
huge ambitions, especially the Greens were hoping to to get a lot of, of their vision on the economy through by, by actually having huge programs uh, to support industries. But with the war, which brought a problem to the economy as a whole, and then with the ruling of the constitutional court, a lot of these plans were not possible anymore. And now this really increases the tension between the government parties and their ideological differences, because now it's com- becoming completely visible that the actually the recipes they have to counter this current economic crisis are completely different. And it's really escalating also because now you have budget negotiations. So already last year after the ruling, the government had to immediately change the budget for 2023 by imposing some expenditure cuts. They cut the subsidy for agriculture diesel, which then led to the whole protest wave of farmers. Um, And for next year, it's looking even worse. There's a kind of hole in the budget of 25 to 30 billion for next year. So there will be, again, a need to cut spending quite substantially. And the Greens and the, the Social Democrats are already, again, questioning the debt break and calling for more investments and uh, to, to kind of avoid the situation where they would need to make some deep cuts either in the, on the investment side or in the welfare state. Finance Minister Christian Linde tried to shut down the rumors regarding the internal crisis during the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos this year. No, there is no government crisis, there is no budget crisis uh, in Germany. Um, But, uh, in fact, the Constitutional Court uh, has made for the first time a decision about the dead break of our Constitution. This is quite new. He said. Now, this internal turmoil isn't a particularly good look, I would say, and I'm sure the opposition is keeping an eye on it. So what's their criticism on this? So both kind of the conservative CDU CSU and also Lindner, who's a bit playing opposition within the government, are really calling for a turnaround of the current situation. What they are in favor of would be to improve the general business conditions. So not subsidize specific industries, but improve the Mm -hmm. conditions for businesses in general. And they blame really Robert Habeck for not doing that. Both the conservative opposition as well as the FDP, they are also questioning a lot of spending that the government has increased on social spending. So last year, there was a reform on the unemployment benefits, um, which a lot of um, people in the in the conservative opposition and also in the FDP say reduces the incentive to work uh, because it in- increases unemployment benefit and the difference between unemployment benefits and actually wages in low wage areas mm-hmm. are decreasing. And then they also question the pension reform that the government has adopted this year, actually with the vote of Christian Lindner, he was agreeing to that. But then only a few weeks later, he was already openly questioning it um, because it's meant to stabilize the the pension system with additional spending from the government budget. Mm -hmm. Um, And this leads to new problems than than for the budget, of course. Um, So so this is really a heated debate that is going on. And the argument there is if you would reduce these kind of expenditures, then you could reduce taxes for corporations, for instance, and improve actually the business. Now, zooming out and looking at this from an EU angle, what impact can this have for Germany in the upcoming EU elections? If you look at the how, how Linda argues, for instance, regarding the Inflation Reduction Act, this is actually quite interesting because, of course, this whole discussion has also been, or the point has been made uh, at the EU level as well. Um, for instance, we talked last week about the Recovery mm-hmm. and Resilience Facility. Um, where there is a call to also have new debt at the EU level. And the same arguments that Lindner now uses to counter kind of new debt in Germany, he, he's also making at the EU level. So mm-hmm. expect a lot of kind of opposition from Germany on anything that goes in the direction of a new fund, new debt uh, finance fund, um, new additional industrial um, subsidies from at the EU level for the same reasons, because he says, actually, we should rather improve business conditions for all, reduce um, corporate taxation for all, rather than spending it on certain industries. And how is the coalition government doing regarding the race for the June elections? The government is performing quite badly in the polls. That is also something important to, to understand this whole conflict. So uh, both the SPD, um, the Greens and the FDP are, are polling way below their, um, their mm-hmm. results of the federal election. Um, And the FDP is actually below the 5% threshold that would be needed to get into the new German government. It's only polling at 3% at the moment. Um, So this also explains why they are in a bit of panic mode uh, and they really have to show what differentiates them from from the other parties in the government and also kind of need to 
get back voters from the conservative opposition by showing them that they are actually serious about their policies, despite maybe it being in a coalition uh, with parties that, that have a completely different vision. Thank you, Jonathan, for joining us today. I am Evi Kiori, and this was your Actives Today in the EU podcast. Visit your Active to stay on top of the latest news, sign up for our podcast newsletter, and if you haven't subscribed or followed us yet, you can find us on all streaming platforms and make sure to leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Your reviews help us a lot to spread the word about our content. This episode was produced by Nicoletta Yonta, Miriam Saenz de Tejada, and myself. Thank you for tuning in, and we will be back tomorrow morning. As part of our commitment to accuracy, inclusion and transparency, Euractiv is part of the Trust Project.